What's going on, Warriors? It's your boy, Lionheart, and I'm back. Feels good, man. I'm doing good. I hope you guys are doing good also. And we ain't wasting any time. We're getting straight into this thing. We're talking about Resident Evil Village. Yeah, man, this game is creepy. I can't believe I have to come back to this world. My stress meter was so high playing Resident Evil 7 that even though I loved the game, I didn't enjoy it because the unlimited amount of stress that game put me under, right? So I can't believe I've got to come back here again. But, you know, Resident Evil is godlike, man. If you ain't played Resident Evil 7, believe me, you need to play that game. Game is godlike. All right, so we're going to be talking a lot. Because what I wanted to do was I wanted to wait for a second trailer, Resident Evil um, Village. Because the first trailer was a very good trailer. But it kind of was a separated disjointed puzzle that i couldn't really understand and i thought like a second trailer would put those pieces together like be the second part that would complete the puzzle that i couldn't really understand and it did do that but you have to look at the first trailer in order to understand the second trailer and vice versa so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at certain elements of the first trailer and then look at elements of the second trailer and put it together, understand things that happened in Resident Evil 7 and then we're going to come to our conclusion as to what the hell is going on in this godforsaken residue of human misery place, yeah? So let's get into it. So first of all, what I want to talk about is this symbol, right? Where you see a fetus and it's got like these crow feathers. We know crows, they represent death. In Resident Evil 7, the developers did a separate video where they did speak about this symbol. And they said, we were debating very, very hard whether we should show this symbol. And in the end, they said they did do it, which of course they did, because we see it in the trailer. Now, this is a massive, I'm not going to say spoiler, but it gives away a lot in terms of the story. Yeah, in terms of what is going on, to me, anyway. And although I'm happy about it, I do think it was a bit of a mistake for them to show this, because it's, it tells us a lot, really. So when you look at this, what I'm seeing is the series from Resident Evil 7, 100%, right? And what does it have to do with this whole village? I think that comes from where we see the mother hand in hand with the daughter, first of all. The daughter breaks free of her mum and then runs directly into the deeper forest and then the child gets lost or whichever. Probably is referring to how the E series, well the A through to D series and E series is made. They're created through injecting the fungus when they're the fetus stage. And then it turns into a mycelia. I think I'm saying that right. Yeah, I'm positive I'm saying that correct. And then once it, if they manage to survive it, they can come out as an A series, through to D series, Evelyn or the E series. And this fetus, I think, is representing the whole series, A through to D and E series. So that means that we're still dealing with the events of Resident Evil 7, right? But we're going to get to that because if I go deeper into that, that is going to kind of too much unravel the other details in which I want to talk about. Yeah. So let's go a little bit more forward into this trailer. Right. Because we could talk about things. Now, what we see here, I think this is important as well. Right. Because what this shows us is, well, it's a woman with a sword. But if you look carefully at the shield you can see it's like a ram's head or something is on there. And then there's another part where you see a door 
has got a shield with a ram's head as well. In Herald Tree, you see a ram's head on a shield. That represents a hierarchy, a family, the nobility of that village of or that area that basically controls everything. They have all the power. So already what this is saying to me is there is a family here, right, that dominates the whole village. And they might be the ones that wield the E-Series. An E-Series has the ability to infect people and then control them. Let's not jump ahead because we want to enjoy this trailer, right? And just breaking it down in terms of things that we're seeing, yeah? Don't worry, we'll come back to everything. We will come back to it, yeah? Just want to quickly say, what a scary ass looking castle right and to even get into that castle yeah you can clearly see that there is a door and that's the door where it looks like you have to find two pieces one for the ram's face and another one for a little human's um face right and that will open and allow you to enter the first part of the castle yeah and so this is what i'm talking about where you see a shield with a ram's head hierarchy the people that hold all the power in the village right so this is probably the main area all right so we see another part which is very important which is a very big reference to the introduction story where it says the woman was with her child and the child broke free and it ran deeper into the forest to cut some berries. The woman is holding her baby. Yeah. What this says to me, and also you look at the fetus in that symbol, right, that represents that whole, the whole village. Yeah. I think that this place has a hierarchy that when members of this village have children the person that is about to have child is infected with the fungus and then of course that's going to create an a series or a d series child right that's what i think that's referring to and then when the child breaks free they're entering the world they're entering the fungus and then exiting you know you know being born right with the A through to D series, or they could be an E series, yeah? So that's what I think that this image represents, where the woman is holding her baby, yeah? It's pretty deep, man. It's, it's amazing to me, just seeing it. And then, because of the second trailer, it's made me see so many little details that I was missing. And even to the point where we see this coat of arms. Umbrella's still knocking about. Because that's a coat of arms. But the umbrella insignia is neatly tucked away. Right? Uh, inside of this um, crest. Which no one will understand in that village. Right? But we know what that is. Because if you played Resident Evil for back in the day. You're not new to it. You will know the Umbrella Insignia. If you're brand new to Resident Evil. And never played Resident Evil before 7. Then it's going to be. what is? You're not going to know what you're looking at. You're not going to understand the Umbrella symbol. And that's what I think that is representing. If you played the old Resident Evils. You know that's Umbrella. If you never played the old um, um, uh, Resident Evils. You don't know what you're looking at. You don't know you're looking at the Umbrella Insignia. So that's a nice little. Real life to us nod. To the old um, generation that played Resident Evil. And the new generation of people that um, are playing the new one. Haven't played the old one. And then also in terms of the people of the village. They don't know who Umbrella is. All they know is the infection. And the residue of human misery. And the evil. And the monsters. And the hierarchy that controls the village. 
It's just incredible to me. You see this image, they look like these are infected, right? These are either A series or D series. That's what I'm thinking because there's three of them. Yeah, well, this one, you see they're kind of like a mist is coming out of one of them, right? So obviously she must have some of the A series or because we don't know what the um, A through to D series abilities are. We only know Evelyn's abilities, right? So we could be seeing uh, an extensive look into the failed experiments. Well, let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that, right? We're going to come to all of that, yeah? So we see this, this image here where there are four four of them four women yeah and the center woman looks like she's obviously got to be the hierarchy the number one person yeah but then the other three ladies around her yeah they look like they are infected 100 percent yeah they are most likely a through to these series infected yeah and then of course where did they come from the village the village where they're probably infecting um women yeah that are about to have child with the fungus to develop the mycelia to turn them into a or d or the a through to d series right so they're probably harnessing the whole infection army right well let's not call them that just yet this is the certain things that make the pieces of the puzzle come together that chris shoots um mia yeah which is messed up right and it's down to plot holes yeah in the set in, in resident evil 7 because resident evil 7 does have a lot of plot holes regarding um the notes about the how a series and d series are created and um the infections that M mia had and ethan and evelyn and everything like that right so one of the first things that i want to look at um in terms of the first of all this is one scary motherfucker i don't believe we got to deal with this bro God damn, if this thing is chasing after you, bro. Bloody hell, man. It's long. It's long. Man, my stress meter, man. <sighs> my stress meter is going to be high, bro. But anyways, so just looking at those little elements, it kind of made me understand more, right? Why Chris killed Mia, right? Now, this goes back to Resident Evil 7. So, Mia, we know she got infected, right? From the first game. For a long time, right? How far was her infection? Because we know that if you have the cure administered, which we was was hundred percent created, but we don't know how well or effective the actual serum that was given to Mia was. Right. In terms of its ability to kill an E series or an infected, we know it's going to work, but we don't know what it does to somebody at. Mia's level of infection, right? In a bad ending, we see Zoe calcify, right? But that's literally because of Evelyn. Evelyn caused that. She accelerated the rate of the infection which killed Zoe. But Zoe never really died. She was just calcified, yeah? But we know that's what the serum does, right? That's why the company... Now, this is what I want to talk about, right? Because I don't want to go all over the place. I want to narrow in exactly certain points of the world that is in this game. So, let's say, for example, we look at the company that I think is in the shadows, manipulating everything. 
That is a company called Tenets. Or Tensu. Tensu, yeah. This is the company that Mia worked for, yeah. That is monitoring the bakers. That created Evelyn. That Lucas works for. They're in control of everything, right? And I think that these guys are there again. The, these guys are the ones behind the manipulation and the control of village. As a matter of fact, there's no doubt in my mind it's them that is doing everything. Because we know that Mia was never cured, right, of the infection, of the mold, of the mycelia. She never was. Because she was far too far gone. No exceptions, right? Zoe has a chance of surviving it, right? Because she was infected for a shorter time, yeah? But Mia was infected for way longer than anybody that we know. So this says to me, if she was naturally or normally cured, she would have died instantly. We've seen what happens. They used the serum. Um, Tensu specifically said in their notes, this cure is it's designed to be a killer. Against somebody that's infected. It's not designed for a cure. It's designed. It's, oh, it will only cure somebody who's been infected for a very short amount of time. Right? So we already know right there. That. Why did Chris come out of nowhere. And kill Mia? This is probably why. Yeah. Because when you look at the second trailer. Yeah. You see the insignia. Where there is. A umbrella symbol. Chris was working in conjunction with Umbrella in Resident Evil 7. So he probably knows about this scenario with the A through to D series and the E series in this village. And Ethan has already proved that he can deal with the infected. And now we know about that thing that they were doing with the children. Maya. Mia could be pregnant, yeah? Most probably she's pregnant and somehow Chris knows, right? And she's not been cured. She couldn't have been cured. So that's probably why Chris came to kill Mia. That's what I think. I don't actually know, but it's just pieces of the puzzle. If you've been kind of like understanding what I'm saying to you, yeah? It kind of makes sense, right? And then maybe Chris kidnaps Ethan, Puts him into that village area because he knows that Ethan is well proven tested. He can deal with this hellish nightmare. Yeah, he's equipped. As long as it's done within a short enough time period, he can be affected, right? Go through this area, deal with whatever has to be done here, uncover the secrets, and then they probably got the serum ready as long as he can come back. In the time period that's allotted to him. Right. So it's just crazy to me man. Because they never. Tend to. Don't want to deal with the A through to D series. Because as far as they're concerned. The A through to D series. Is a failure. Right. Because they deemed them impractical. And useless. You know. They're, they're, they're not useful. Right. Which basically means they can't do the job. That they want them to. Because essentially, the whole reason that they're making these type of um, viruses and these infections and herself, Evelyn, yeah, E001, yeah, I believe that's what our code was, essentially was to infect an entire nation, right? Enter an area or a family or a place, go from place to place. Mind control them and infect them, and then they are controlled by her. And Evelyn can be programmed, right? 
So that's the perfect weapon, a weapon that can be programmed to carry out orders, go into another um, land or area or place, infect, control or destabilize. And then the people Tensu who's controlling will say, this is an area that we've taken over or we have control over. We can destroy them. We can take them to your side or whatever, right? So it's, it's basically another form of bioweapons of mass um, infection but more stable and controlled right so yeah to be honest with you that's what i really can see from this whole trailer it's deep man it's hella deep so i think maybe <sighs> i don't know whether it's a different two different factions you have umbrella on one side and then tensu company on the other side or is it Tensu that is controlling everything and an umbrella that is at war with them and they are manipulating things from the shadows so maybe this insignia is representing another faction that umbrella is controlling or manipulating it's some crazy stuff man it's for sure mad you know i'm excited about it to so once if you that was my findings yeah regarding this trailer um i want to know what you guys think what do you think about my hypothesis um about looking into certain aspects of the series the d series the e series um this lady yeah who i believe she's probably just an, an e series right that is controlling these three um women monsters yeah that are obviously infected they're probably the a through to d series yeah that the company tensu considers as failures right and them using the whole village right as a breeding ground to infect um women that are about to have children with the fungus for them to harvest the mycelia that turns them into E series, A series, through to D series. I don't know, man, but that's what I can, I think, right? So yeah, I'd love to have the discussion with you guys. Maybe we can even do podcasts where we have discussions about these type of things. Because look, man, I've gone in, yeah. I played Resident Evil Seven late. I think it was like maybe July, late July through to um, early August. But I went in properly. I finished every single difficulty. I played it multiple times. I read all the notes. I'm into it, right? I love this on Resident Evil 7. This direction they've gone in with Resident Evil 7 is incredible, man. And then to see this trailer, bro, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I was going to wait till Tokyo Game Show where they show a little bit more. But I thought to myself, let's do it now. I've got a lot of data. And these are my findings. So yeah, Warriors, that's all I really want to say about that. Over to you. So once again, take care, stay blessed, and please, thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing, um, liking, and subscribing and chatting to me. Take care, Warriors.